What does it take to become a doctor? These are the real life stories of McMaster University's med students. episode of med students Sarah works with the anesthesia team Allison has her final residency interview and Karen is called to the ER for second-year student Sarah Kim coping with med school is a matter of maintaining balance most of the time it doesn't happen because um, your studies consume you. Um, you're constantly being challenged, you know, in clinical uh, to try and, you know, answer questions or manage a patient. So, yeah, it's been really hard. Today, her equilibrium will be tested as her anesthesia rotation takes her into the OR. The first operation that we're going to be uh, participating in tonight is an amputation. Sarah's patient is a diabetic with circulation problems. His leg must be amputated to save him from deadly infection. Okay. You want this sat mounted on him now? Sarah's work will be guided by anesthesia resident, Dr. Julie Scott. I've seen the end product. I've seen people who have had their leg amputated, the healed. Um, end product, but I have never seen actually someone get their limb cut off. Okay, I'm just going to put some oxygen on you. Are you warm enough, mm -hmm. Lloyd? Mm -hmm. You want another blanket? Mm-mm. No? I can't imagine what it'd be like to lose one a limb, too. Mm -hmm. I just, I feel sorry for him. I think we all get kind of attached to our body parts and don't really think about what life would be like without ones. Karen is a former nurse. She's the mother of two sons, and she's a second-year med student a couple of weeks into her on-the-job training in pediatrics. I know I'm gonna make mistakes. I know that when I make a mistake, I'm never gonna make it again, because that's how you learn in, in this job. Um, and I know that there's always people around that I can say, I, I don't know this, I need help. Today, Karen is responsible for examining children in the ER. Her first patient is a 19-month-old boy suffering from painful constipation. When's the last time he had a bowel movement? Yesterday at noon. When I was a nurse, what I saw doctors do that I always thought I would be interested in, in doing is, yeah, putting all the pieces together, figuring out what really is wrong and really figuring out what can be done to help this person or help their family. Figuring out how to help Spencer starts with taking a history. Does he cry? Does he scream? Does he grunt? What is, what is he doing? He doubles over and he strains, like you can see it in his face goes red, you can see the veins in his neck. He actually holds his breath when it actually does start to come out. Before the patient's surgery begins, Sarah learns how to insert an IV line. The last time I did an IV was sometime in my first year, so I'm not very good at them. Can you just talk me through it? Yep. Okay, I'm going to poke. Does it hurt at all? Okay. Try not to move your hand. Okay. Okay, so you need to push the, your catheter in. Yeah. Yep, that's good. Just nice and slow. Is it going easily? Mm -hmm. Perfect. You can just keep going. Sarah's IV looks good until she punctures a blood vessel. So we just went through the vessel wall, which isn't a big deal. OK, so nothing is going smoothly right now. That's, that's just the way it's supposed to go, right? 
In terms of like the medical aspect of things, nothing is familiar. <laughs> nothing is familiar. <laughs> it's all brand new. Um, but being a parent, I know what it's like to be a stressed out parent and feel like, you know, oh my God, I need help. And, and deal with a sick child at, in the middle of the night and day after day and then feel like, you know, am I doing enough or is there something more? And, and uh, yeah, feeling the stress of that. So, so that part of it's very familiar. Karen's next step is to conduct a physical exam. I'm thinking one of the things they're certainly going to want to do is an x-ray of his abdomen just to see how full he is and see what's there. Pardon? But it hasn't been done today. Like, we need to know. Yes. They, oh, they did it today. Oh, OK. Well, then we'll go and we'll have a look at that. OK, great. Um, we talked to him. He's had spinals before. Mm -hmm. We talked to him about sedation. And he's Sarah's supervisor reviews the patient's anesthesia options. Okay, so you're gonna feel a little poke. Now this is the freezing, it stings. He's decided to opt for an epidural, which will numb him from the chest down, but leave him conscious throughout the surgery. Right, five, 10 seconds, okay? So the anesthetist's job is okay. make it so they're not aware of what's going on, so basically to make them unconscious. Another is to um, control pain. And if anything does go wrong, in the end, it's, um, the anesthetist can often be the one to um, basically save the day. Do your legs feel funny now? Mm -hmm. What do they feel like? Uh, like pins and needles. Perfect. Yeah. Now, does that feel cool? Sarah stands by as the epidural takes effect. Once the patient's leg is frozen, the amputation can begin. Does that feel cold down there? Or do you just feel me touching? Oh, I feel cold. Third-year medical student Allison Broder will graduate as a doctor in three months and begin residency training in her specialty. After interviewing for placements across the country, Allison is sure of one thing. She wants to stay at McMaster. I'm very close to my family and it'd be very hard being out there. Residency is a fairly stressful time and you have to be able to rely on your support systems and you have to know what your support systems are and for me a large part of my support system is my family and my friends. How she performs at this morning's interview for a pediatrics residency could determine whether or not she gets her wish. I am a little nervous. The anesthesia team runs into trouble. The epidural has not been effective. Are you able to move your leg there? Yeah. Yeah. That's unusual. Usually people can't. Um, then we have two options: either we can do another spinal, or we can put him to sleep. If the spinal isn't freezing you as much, Sarah helps Dr. Scott to put the patient under. I'll put you out to sleep. We'll give you some painkiller medication to make you nice and comfortable. Okay. Just try and breathe normally. We're just giving you oxygen here. Yeah. With the patient asleep, the amputation can get underway. So, yeah, I'll just talk with him and find out what we're going to do. As a student, Karen must consult with her supervisor, pediatrician Dr. Dion Neen. Okay, so Spencer. Mm -hmm. 19-month-old boy mm -hmm. comes in with a six-month history of okay. constipation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Basically what you're doing is you're taking a bowel, which is normal and small, mm -hmm. and you're essentially, what you're doing is you're stretching it. Okay. So, so which too is much... why they're large, right? Yeah, exactly. So too much, too much poo stretches it out. Um, essentially what we have to do is we have to make the child poo. You've got to clean it out, and then you've got to make them poo and make them poo to shrink it back down to a normal size. And the clean-out phase tends to be things like, um, suppositories, they used to be enemas, 
they can be. Um... It's hard to say that constipation is something that's interesting. But <laughs> never thought I'd say it myself, but it is. So there's gas, gas, mm -hmm. and then more stool so, yeah. here, and then like you've got. Yep, it's particulate matter. Like you can, can you see? It almost looks like marble. Looks like, yeah. Yep, it's just particulate matter that's all over the place. It's even over here. And look how big it is. Yeah, yeah it's all. Oh, it's huge. But this kid's so full of crap. It's going all the way up here, all the way across, coming down. He is our classic constipated child, and how does he eventually present? He presents with pain. Well done. Now you know what it likes to be full of shit. <laughs> it's constipation day. We've actually this is our third child with constipation. <laughs> so it's it's extremely common. Okay. We'll try an enema here. Or maybe we'll get a huge response. Um, he was discharged home and his parents were given some instruction and some you know, just some support that yeah, things will come back to normal, but it's gonna be a long process. The first part of Allison's interview is supposed to be low key. I'm one of the pediatric intensive care staff okay. here at the Children's Hospital. Okay. And for the next half hour or so, we're just going to have a casual chat. Okay. Um, you probably know this. It's hard to be casual when the future's at stake. I'm, I'm very energetic and very enthusiastic and, sort of and very passionate <laughs> about things I do. <laughs> about things I take on and and I'm very much a people person. I've had a lot of jobs that have required strong people skills, not just in, like, not just in medicine. I worked in this bar in London. It was a little bit slow paced. So the fact that, you know, it was kind of like the TV show Cheers where people would come in, but they were from all different countries and they'd mm -hmm. sit down, have a beer, and you chat to them for half an hour. <laughs> and uh, you need it, yeah, you need to have people skills. You need to be able to talk to all different kinds of people. Absolutely. And it's funny because you wouldn't really think being a bartender would be, you know, something that would make you a good doctor, but I developed a lot of people skills doing that. <laughs> you know, you can and... throw that into an asset to the program <laughs> that you're a bartender. <laughs> that would work for a lot of people. <laughs> I think that went well. I'm pretty sure the interview with Dr. Capito went fairly well, but we'll see, I guess. Sarah and the anesthetist monitor the patient as surgeons begin the amputation. I've never seen a limb chopped <laughs> off. I'm not very squeamish, so <laughs> this is all kind of fun is a bad word to use, but it's interesting. So I think maybe uh, the sensation of actually uh, doing the cutting might make me feel a little squeamish. Yeah. More trouble for the anesthesia team. The patient begins to move. It's like the nightmare. His medication is adjusted immediately. Amputation patient is no longer moving, but Sarah and Dr. Scott keep a close watch as the surgery continues. The experience throws Sarah for a bit of a loop. <laughs> I didn't think it'd take that fast. If my boyfriend were here, he would pass out, like, in a second, be, like, on the floor. The limb will be taken to a lab for pathological evaluation. It never really looks like the way you expect it to for some reason. Even med students can find the OR unsettling. Uh, Spencer, okay. I think they've got him an ENT. Okay, I'll be right back. Karen's supervisor presents a little surprise. Okay. The next patient is his best friend's daughter. I'm so nervous it's his friend's kid. Oh my god. 
I'm gonna see my best friend's kid. It's a little nerve wracking because it's somebody he knows and I'm like, oh my God. They could talk over a few drinks sometime and he could say, who was that clinical clerk you sent in there that night? <laughs> This is Karen. Karen. Hi. Kurt and Angie. Kurt and oh, Angie. Hannah Hi. Right there. And that's Hannah, and she looks okay. nice and comfy. And what brings Hannah in today? What seems to be the problem? She has been running a temperature of about 103 to 105 through the day today, and we just haven't been able to get it to drop. Maybe while she's settled, before I ask you some of the other questions, I'm just going to. Uh, have a listen to her chest and look in her ears and that kind of thing before she starts to get a little bit upset. I'm like, Dr. Neem remains nearby as Karen starts her examination. Oh, she doesn't look good at all. She looks so The question this case presents is, does Hannah have a viral or more serious bacterial infection? Okay, see you later. So, so personally, uh, I would admit this little baby. And the reason, because I think that she's starting to have a bit of a change in her level of consciousness, right. and she's very dry, okay. and she's not drinking anything. Right. Like they said, they can't get her to drink anything. Right. Okay. And she's, yeah, her lips are dry. Um, okay. Allison heads in for the more formal part of her residency interview, a tough series of ethical questions. So uh, first one I wanted to know, you've had any scenario in which you've had a conflict in patient management or conflict with patient and how did you go about managing that issue? Well I can think of one, I wouldn't say it was necessarily a conflict in that sense but on my last day of call at McMaster I I, I came in and there had been three cases of suspected child abuse admitted mm -hmm. the night before. And that was extremely challenging for me. Um, I think, you know, being someone who has devoted a lot of time to children and caring about children, that's a very hard thing to deal with. So I found that I was trying to be open-minded speaking and talking to the parents, but I found that I had a lot of biases coming up. But how about a patient management, uh, any odd conflict with the patient, for example? Um, do you think you've gone through anything which was a difficult situation because of the conflict, either in patient management or with the patient or the family? Hmm. Does, it, does it have to be with a patient or it can it be with a supervisor? That uh, could be my next question. So if you... Oh, is it? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, Jeff, are you done? Yeah. Now that the surgery is complete, the team prepares the patient for the recovery room. Lloyd? Lloyd? I like to watch how they interact with the patient and um, pick up things that say, oh, that's, you know, that's a really nice touch. I think I want to keep that filed for the back the next time I interact with someone. So, it's been good. Karen checks on Hannah, who continues to be treated in the emergency room. You're going to feel so much better when this goes in. Yeah, you know, I know you don't believe me, but <laughs> it's true. Oh, is that her blood work? Karen sees no clear signs of a bacterial infection. She's got a bit of an elevation, but not really too much. If there's kind of a really big active bacterial kind of infection going on, it would be way higher than that. Yeah, I was just looking at it, but it's not that high, right? No, so it's not that high, but this is the problem here. This is high, so if you take the percentage oh, okay. of those two... Oops. Karen gets some on-the-spot teaching. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so... So it is. Yeah. Okay. What's wrong? But her initial response was right. Hannah must be admitted to hospital. I feel good to... Because I'm never going to forget now. 
See, that's the one thing about medicine that's good, because there's always people there to tell you, okay, you've used the knowledge that you have, and it makes sense what you've done, but you need to look at it a little bit broader than that and look at it in a bigger picture of things. Like, you just don't, you don't ever feel stupid. All right, Alison, well, good luck okay. to you. Thank you very much. Okay. It's nice good to meet to you, Dr. Okay. Mahi. Take care. I think she, she was just harder to read. Like, I think sometimes interviewers are, you can get kind of positive feel from them. Sometimes they're just, that's just the way they interview and you can't really tell. Well, we wish you all the best. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Take care. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Allison's residency interviews are finally over. Now comes the hard part, waiting to find out whether she'll win a placement at McMaster or have to move away and take on residency without the support of her friends and family. Sarah's shift is over. She tries to spend Sunday afternoons with her grandmother. She had a stroke last March and hasn't been able to walk since then. Okay. Okay. She wants me to eat her, she saved her lunch for me because my cousin brought her um, lunch from home because uh, she's convinced that I don't eat. So. We're going to go downstairs and um, just practice some of her transfers and practice standing with her and walking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, she pretty much raised us um, when we were kids, so uh, now it's kind of roles reversed. We try to visit her as much as possible because she's very lonely here. <laughs> I don't know why she likes going fast. It's probably because she has to sit still all day. She likes the feeling of the wind through her hair. It makes her feel like it's free. <laughs> On the next episode of Med Students, Dar gets his first patient, Repinder survives pediatrics, and Bryn Lee takes on general surgery. Well done. Not bad for a woman. <laughs>